Harold, take a look at the headlines now. I want to show you this. This is the Washington Post yesterday. Anxiety ripples through the Democratic Party over Biden. New York Times Sunday. Top Dems' bullishness on Biden 2024 collides with voters' worries. In NBC over the weekend, Biden allies worry Sun Hunter's indictment could strain the president's 2024 focus. Uh, Democratic Party uh, anxiety rippling through it, parent, according to the Washington Post. These are your, your folks. What do you say? So, again, thanks for having me. I think it's going to take somebody to run in order to, to, to displace or to beat uh, Joe Biden uh, on the Democrat side. It doesn't appear that anyone wants to do it or anyone is willing to do it. Gavin Newsom's name had been thrown around, circulated a lot. Uh, and now he is sh showing that he's not only supportive of Vice President Harris, but the president himself. Uh, I think uh, next few months will be interesting and telling. If more polling data comes out showing that President Biden and Vice President Harris are having a problem beating the field, the Republican field, in a, in a general election next year, that may influence or catalyze someone getting in the race. But short of that, it's hard to imagine that Joe Biden is not the nominee. I would agree with Governor Newsom. Uh, the, the president and the vice president have a lot to be proud of. I think there are one or two things they have to tackle, though. Uh, the border uh, and crime. Um, that would, I think, satisfy a lot of Democrats, and more importantly, I think a lot of independents in the, in the five or six states that are going to be critical it's pretty, to this election. pretty high hurdle with a yeah. year and a half to go on the border and crime. Well, I, well, I think you can, but... Okay, right on. Um, Rich, uh, he said they have produced a master class yeah. of they, governing. Well, the, the, he did, he did um, punch above his weight legislatively. That's true. But if you, if you got Gavin at French Laundry, got a couple glasses of Chablis in, in, in them, I guarantee you this is not his sincere view, the way it is with a lot of Democrats who they'll, they'll have their whisper conversations that are really worried and then they'll go out publicly and say what they have to say. Also, it's, it's everyone can note the irony, right? He's like, Joe Biden is totally up for this job. He's show, putting on a master class. And by the way, just in case something happens, here I am, you know, this young, charismatic <laughs> governor of a large state. I, don't hope, I hope nothing happens, but if it does, you know, are you noticing me? Uh, Harold, take a listen to David Axelrod on Biden Newsom. It's sort of like, you know, uh, just at the time when Democrats are concerned about their aging, you know, spouse, here comes the young right. neighbor, young strapping potential partner. See I don't think he's setting himself up to run in 2024, but he's certainly getting a head start on 2028. I, I don't think there's any question about that. Or if he's using the Trump-Biden metric, you know, Newsom's got, I don't know, 30 more years to run, should he want to. But when do you think he's going to make the move? Look, I think, I think Rich, there's a lot of what Rich said is probably accurate, that, that there are a lot of Democrats who are thinking that President Biden's age is a consideration. Uh, he seems healthy. I, I'm one that uh, 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 probably veers a little more that I think the, the president's in better physical shape. I've never seen a guy ride a bike fall off like he does and gets right back up. I, go, I know guys in their 20s and 30s who can't do that. So I give him, I give him a lot of credit for even riding the bike. I think that they're, I think that they're, I think, the standards are pretty low. No, no, but I think if you fall off a bike and get up like he does, he's active. But I think that the, the, the acuity around policy is, I think, what's going to be important. Again, I, I can't stress enough how I think some attention to the border and attention to crime. You led with the story, the, the terrible story in Seattle. We talked about these terrible stories all across the country. Uh, if I were Vice President Harris, and I've said before, I'd run around the country gathering best practices in fighting crime uh, and keeping communities safe and keeping police morale high and come back to the president and say, let's offer a bill before Congress. Let's do a, another crime bill here like we did in 94 to face, to stare down the challenges we face right now and then get down to the border and give, give Republicans a challenge. What can we do together to make our borders safer? A good point, Harold. I appreciate that. Uh, that fall on the bike was kind of in slow mo, though. It, it was, yeah. Did he, he teeter? Right back or, up, though. or did he totter? Um, it's like it we, is about how you get back up. Weebles wobble. <laughs> true on that. So Rich Lowry he writes this, Fetterman wins Senate dress code battle and beclowns the institution. Yes. And then Senator Fetterman went after Republicans on this. Hang on one second, watch. It's, you know, a little more freedom, which should be bipartisanship, you know what I'm saying? So, but I don't know why the right side seems to be losing their minds over it. Like, ah, dogs and cats are living together and, you know, like the world's spinning off its axis. But, you know, I think it's a good thing. So uh, another political masterclass. Yeah, so I'm a little bit of a hypocrite on this because I do have a green hoodie that I love and I, I wear a lot. My wife at some point is And like, Rich, he's wearing sweatpants right now. Yeah, you Richard is gracing the family. And I don't know where this hoodie is now. It might have been trashed behind my back. But I would never wear it here, right? I would never wear it to a business meeting. I would never wear it... Uh, 
on the floor of the U.S. Senate. And you dress appropriately, not necessarily because you like it, some people do, but to show respect for yourself, respect for your colleagues, and respect for your institution. So if the United States Senate, the United States Senate can't maintain some basic standard uh, for decorum, I don't know what's coming to this country. Uh, yeah, both of you gentlemen look great this morning. Right? <laughs> I agree with Richard. What about me? <laughs> I, I, to, to, well, we're talking about guys Thank dressing up. Thank you. You always look great. Go ahead. I agree with Rich. I do think if you have a medical or health condition, and, and Senator Federman may have what will allow that kind of exception, I think you have to wear a shirt and tie on the floor. And I think that would be for the respect for yourself and the institution, as Rich said. Absolutely. And Americans. Yeah. Still have to abide by the dress code. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can show and the staffers and do too. And show up and work at a Starbucks the way he dresses. So it's, it's kind of sort of he has a privilege that he can do this when, like, his staffer, you know, he walks down the hallway, looks looks like he just, you know, got up from the couch watching football all weekend, and his poor staffer has to dress like a respectable yeah, yeah, person. Yeah, you're he right do about the same that. Thing. Uh, thank you, Rich. Thank you, Harold. Great to have you, you both on. Okay. Go Bengals. I want uh, you all to get a game uh, soon. Get your win soon. Don't get lose hope. That's right.